Lifestyle Podcast. Interviewing the world's industry leaders on their journey. Hello and welcome along to the Candy Pants Lifestyle Podcast. I'm Nick and if you are a fan of podcasts hosted by nervous sounding Geordies, well you're in exactly the right place. This week we speak to someone who perhaps isn't who you think she is. Amy Hart shot to fame last summer as the country were gripped by Love Island. It's been 12 months since she left the most watched villa on television and in one of the most honest and at times a little deep chats we've even had on this podcast, Amy gives us an insight into the influencer world that we all so often see but rarely actually take the time to understand. What really is it like for your life to play out in front of the nation on primetime TV and overnight discover pretty much everyone suddenly has an opinion on both you and your love life? It's a story of overcoming anxiety, defeating self-doubt and smashing some stereotypes along the way. This is the journey of Miss Amy Hart. Miss Amy Hart on the podcast. How are you? Hello, I'm good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Do you know what it is? I had one of those lockdown days today where I decided, right, tomorrow I'm going to be really up early, productive. So I was going to, I got up at half five, like, what was I doing? Then drove to the coast, which is like 10 minutes from where I live, went for a run. I'm Mm -hmm. all thinking, I'm coming back, thinking I'm the best, I'm just so productive, like I've achieved so much today. Gets to three o'clock and I'm struggling. The podcast is six now, but it's all right. I've had some fruit pastels and I'm, I feel nice. like I'm back in the game now. I feel like you've been surprising quite a few people recently, and I like it. Yeah, I like that too. I like my my bio on Twitter is "Don't judge a book by the reality show they were on." Ah, well, that's good for you, isn't it? Like it's one year since you yeah. were on Love Island. Since you've done pretty well, you haven't done teeth whitening. You've no. never done an extravagant car air freshener. I have not. No. But you've had a column in The Guardian, very yeah. left field. Yeah, and become some weird sort of social commentator, which it is seems... not what any of us had planned, really. But Amy Hart seems saying. to be the new Jeremy Corbyn, and I, that is a sentence I never thought I would hear myself say. I prefer Ava Peron, like Evita okay. in the film. <laughs> <laughs> it does it is people. slightly it's slightly more impressive yeah the, the people's princess well maybe that could be the next insta bio <laughs> yeah i mean I'm, I'm not sure it'll go down well but uh... <laughs> you're gonna get a hard time if you post that yeah my whole thing about this is i want to speak to you because i feel like you're a person who maybe people don't realize you are so yeah tell you what so, you tell you tell me something that you would like people to know that they probably don't. Okay, I'm very passionate about social justice, which sounds really boring, but I'm just I just don't really understand why people would be nasty. Like in any part of life, then in the social justice thing, I think like, you know, kids don't choose to be born into the families they're born into, and kids don't choose to be born into situations they're born into. Some people are like food banks are for lazy people. I'm like, no, they're not. Like, your situation can change at any time. Like, literally, you could have husband, three kids, nice house, and then your husband leaves you and you've got nothing. Or your husband dies, you've got nothing. Or your wife dies, you've got nothing. And I just think people need to help each other a bit more, a bit more com- sense of community. Do you know what? I saw a tweet, and the tweet about you said, if you told me last summer one of the girls on Love Island will be writing a Guardian article about ina- inadequacy of government social protection measures mm-hmm. and the need to unionise, I would have never believed you. <laughs> exactly. And this what? is the thing, people slag off Love Island, and um, I've talked about it till I'm blue in the face, I won't dwell on it too much, but the general consensus around Love Island is everyone's thick and everyone's perfect and beautiful and out of this world amazing. I'm like, you can't say that, and then troll me for being fat and ugly, and then also, um, then, you know, you have to give me some sort of, not credit, I suppose, but, like, when I write articles, say, like, okay, no, okay, okay, we were wrong. But then I think, like, my year, we had, you know, Amber's a very, very clever girl. She's very streetwise. Like, 
Anna, pharmacist. You one day, scientist. Do you know what I mean? Like, Elma's an accountant. And you think, why just because we want to go on this TV show, do you think we're sick? You know when you talk about trolling? Mm. What does that feel like? I mean, I'm talking to someone who's, like, just got, like, hasn't got loads of followers on Instagram. But to get those nasty comments, like, what is that like to sit there and get that out of your phone? Um, it depends on the day, it really does. If you're having a really good day, you're, just like, you're like, okay, whatever. And, like, there's certain people that message me all the time that reply right. to everything. But then I always find really interesting is if you scroll back up, they either started, like, because back at the beginning of Love Island, well, from when I first came to Villa, I'm trying uh, to sneeze, sorry. Am I? You can sneeze if you like. Um, Sneezing's allowed gone. on the podcast. It's gone. <laughs> How do you see that? <laughs> um, so when I first came out of the villa, obviously every time I refreshed my phone, I was getting um, like another 20 DMs, another 20 DMs, another 20 DMs. So I missed a lot of them because obviously I did 37 interviews in 14 days. It was very busy. And you see people who have started off doing nice messages. And then obviously where I've missed them, um, right. When they, when they get nasty, um, there's one woman who went from being like, love you, Amy, you're amazing, to then like, um, so what, you're so boring, you need to get fit, young lady. And then today it was, your lips look bigger today. I just think, why? What is wrong with these people? Like, what have they like not got going on in their lives? They've got an hour to sit and watch us talking to each other on Instagram, write horrible things. I'm like, actually, I know I pity you. Like, and people I know it's, say it, it's not easy to say yeah. you must be sad, but yeah. it must for you to get yeah. it. It must be like if you're not in a, if you're having a bad day, which everyone has, it must mm. be like. Oh, I don't but, need this. Like, we were saying last night, like a lot of them are young people, yes, and you go, where are their parents? But I get a lot of middle aged people with wives, husbands, children, um, grandparents. Like they troll me, and I think no wonder the youth of today is so bad. And this is the example they're being set. And, like, these people have got friends. And I think, like, do you go to dinner parties? And, like, what have you been up to? Oh, I kept sending Amy Hart me- messages on Instagram the other day, horrible ones. Like, who does that? Who tells their friends that? And why are you still friends with these people? Like, it's weird. When you do get a bad one and you are having a bad day, do you, have you now got a way that you think, right, when this happens, I will do this to deal with it? No, not really. Because... And then it's so fast, like, life is so fast-paced. Like, at the beginning of lockdown, yeah. when I started getting, like, a lot more trolling and stuff, um, I started... That, maybe that says like, a lot, though. Maybe that says a lot of it's just, yeah. like, pure boredom. Um, right at the beginning of lockdown, the last episode of Celebs Guy Dating had just come out. Yeah. And it had me getting a bit emotional with Paul and about how, like, um, people are nasty online and stuff and how I was sort of, like, at rock bottom before I started Celebs Guy Dating, etc. And I posted it and I said, like, this weekend, we're all going to be stuck in our houses. Like, before you write things, like, please just think about what you have to say. And even people commented on any piece of stuff on that. And I was like, it's a post about anti-trolling. Like, why? Why do you... Maybe that tells you everything you need to know. These people are just kind of... I know, and people say, oh, you put yourself yourself forward for it. You think, did I? Did I actually, though? Like, because when I was a kid and I used to watch Big Brother... They put themselves forward for reality show, but they've never had to deal with the social media of it all. And, and you can blame the press and you can blame the TV companies as much as you want, but the only difference between the Big Brother days and the Love Island days is social media. If you could live without social media, would you come off it? And know it's no. important for your job. For me, what it does positively outweighs what it does negatively, like tenfold. Um, and I think I think that's probably how I deal with with trolls and stuff because. I do really enjoy social media and I enjoy seeing yeah. what my friends are up to. And I enjoy, I'm a bit, I'm nosy. Like I'm a really nosy person. Oh, and, but you all like, know that's why it works. Yeah. yeah. Like, I love my musicals and like when I follow all the musical accounts and see like, you know, when they go backstage at the shows and show you what goes on backstage, like, I love all of that. And I think, yeah, it just, it just needs more policing really. Like I've sent, um, I've reported like messages and stuff to Instagram that have been horrendous, like death threats, and it always comes back that it doesn't violate community guidelines. I had this person on from a burn so a burner account is like a burner phone, um, in, in that they make an account, um, and this is what Bobby's trying to get done. They said, Why 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 is it possible just to make these accounts over and over and over again? Yeah. Um, so they make an account, no followers, no posts, 
don't follow anyone and they just so I had I think it so was just to be clear years. that they're making these accounts just purely to be horrible Troll. people is that right yeah so I got 26 messages I think it's about half 10 on a Monday morning I got 26 messages that were like you're disgusting you're the most ugly girl that's ever been into Love Island I wish I could kill you um you're awful you're disgusting uh, you ruined Love Island everyone was so happy when you left and it was like literally just like a barrage like your teeth are awful you're disgusting you're really fat um all this sort of stuff so I was like okay report just click to report and it says like you know why you're reporting this and I put it's you know it's inappropriate yeah um and they're like cool okay within like three hours get a message from Instagram and um, we've we've like looked at it and doesn't um it doesn't uh break community guidelines and I think look I was having time in my life that day because I was had my in the style range and yeah. it was the day we were launching it. And I got that from one person. Imagine if you turned your phone in the morning and you had 15 of those barrages of comments. Yeah. Like nobody can deal with that. Do you get more of these, do you think, than other people? Or you talk to like other girls and, and stuff. Do they get the same amount? Do they get no, more? It's, do they get less? Do you think you get more? Um, I speak to the others and I think the more that you know, they never kick a dead dog. So the more relevant you are, the more engagement you get and the more followers you have, the more you get, I think. Yeah. So like I do get, I don't get much anymore. It's like when the, I did a photo shoot of me in, in wigs and the wig photos went out and they went absolutely viral. And I like, yeah. had a million, a million profile visits in one day, which is crazy. And that's when the trolling all came back like in real full force because it was like relevant so we went to victoria station in london and i had to quickly pick up a top like because i didn't realize i had to have two different outfits for this job i was doing so me and my friend went into um new look in um or dorothy perkins one of the two in victoria station and i said to the girl hi um, i need like a jumper or something she went oh my god it's you and I was like, yeah, it's me. Hi, um, I need a jumper. And she went, do you know what? You are actually pretty. And I was like, cool, thanks. She was like, no, honestly, like I would have said, like if someone said to me, is Amy Hart pretty? I would have said no. And now that you're here in front of me, you actually are. Like, so well done. I'm like, cool, thanks. Well Still need the jumper. <laughs> Can <laughs> you help me? Um, and my friend was like, I don't want to buy anything in here. I was like, they don't get the money, it's fine. Um, Sorry, have you got better at dealing with that? Because I don't know if you, you're, you've told that story like it's passing up, but that's not normal, Amy. That, that, that's quite horrible. I know, it is horrible. And like, um, what else? I get messages, I hated you on Love Island, but now I follow you on Instagram, you're actually all right. A little bit earlier, you said you were at rock bottom before you went on Celeb School Day in. What do you mean? Yeah. Um, rock bottom is probably a bit of a dramatised version. Not like you. From Ames. <laughs> uh, not like me at all. Um, it's the musical version, darling. Um, no, so rock bottom. So I went from eight and a half years of having my roster for the next six weeks, that pretty much being fixed, my days off being fixed, getting on the aircraft, doing the service, it was the same every time, sorting out a couple of issues here and there, becoming cab manager, doing it my way. I said what happened, my domain. Yeah. Going into the villa, five very weird, traumatic, stressful, crazy weeks. Yeah. Coming out, 37 interviews in 14 days. I'm no longer in charge of what I do. Um, I have the press writing fake articles about me all the time. Anything I say is taken out of context. I've got people selling stories on me that I consider to be my friends. Um, I've got people online being nasty every day um things are planned and then things get changed um I'm going to four different jobs in one day I've got no um no routine no schedule I'm answerable to no one I don't have anything to work towards everything is its own sort of entity if that makes sense and I yeah. was just like what am I doing with my life Going to celebs go dating. Um, I was filming in London three days a week. I had to get up, have my hair and makeup done, get on the train to London. So it was going to work. Um, the agents would like the agents. It's not like a TV show. Like they actually do really care, and they show like every time you go into the agency, they show sort of like two minutes of it, or whatever. I can be in there for up to an hour. Um, really? So, so it's like the, the, 
it's a proper chat. Oh yeah, hundred percent. The thing is, Anna is a counselor and life coach. Okay. Paul is um, Paul's one of the like biggest like matchmaking experts, and he's just an all round legend. That man. Um, and so yeah, you've been there for an hour, and they set you like little tasks to do. Like some of them wouldn't even make it onto the TV show, but. Like they set you like little tasks to do. Like, okay, when you go on the date tonight, I want you to do this before. And when you go on the date tonight, I want you to think about this. And this is what you've really got to concentrate on. And we're going to ask you about it when you come back. So I had something to be answerable to. And it gave me more structure in my life. And I wasn't... This is the thing as well. Everyone is so... We talked about this like off podcast, but everyone is so negative. And even like my really... Like people that I've known my whole life say to me, I'll be like oh yeah I'm doing this this week like something really exciting and they go yeah well like enjoy it because obviously it'll be over soon mm. and you're like okay cool and then you go oh we're doing this then and they're like oh it's good that you're still like doing stuff because like, obviously you know are the others also doing stuff like who's doing the best like like you, you're not doing that other person's doing that you're not doing that and it's the more time you hear something so hearing it's going to be over soon it's going to be over soon it's going to be over soon over and over and over again you start to think this is going to be over soon. This is going to be over soon. What am I going to do when it's over? I've given up my job. I've given up my career to do this. And now this is over. And what? And I really struggled with, in the lead up to that, I wasn't enjoying what was happening right now because all I was thinking was, it's going to be over soon. And I thought, I don't want to get to when it's over and think, oh, I didn't actually enjoy any of it because I was too busy worrying about what's going to happen now. And now I've got now to worry about what's happening now. I was still crazy busy up until when I signed the contract for Serbsco Dating. And my best friend said to me, right, you've got to love to go dating and you've got in the style, right? So now you can calm down, actually enjoy it because now you know what you're doing up until March. And then coronavirus happened, so I was fine. Do you know what? When coronavirus happened, everyone was a bit worried about me because they were thinking, oh my God, obviously all work's been put on hold. A lot of my work was based on travel for this year. Yeah. Um, obviously that's been put on hold. And everyone was like, she is going to lose it. But I didn't. Because it's not my, I mean, none of it's my, none of it was ever my fault, but it was coronavirus's fault, so it was easier to digest. It wasn't wasn't anything that I did. It, it couldn't be helped. Just to maybe oh, this could be a bit deep, but you then Ellie said it wasn't my fault. Do you think in the past you've struggled with things because you blamed yourself for things that maybe weren't your fault? Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, you know when you get a get a brand deal and you you love it and you really enjoy it like whether it's like an Instagram one or like a bigger one or whatever and you really enjoy it and then you see someone else doing it two months later and you think oh so I've just recruited a load of people to do it and they haven't asked me so what did I do wrong like did I not get enough and then you go back and start looking at your engagement on the pictures and stuff and you think did I not did I not do well enough on that like what did I do wrong there's certain stuff that I've done that I've you know, I've been really down about the fact that I haven't done it again. And my best friend, I'm very lucky. I've got a very um, realist, truthful best friend who, because we've been best friends for 10 years and we've been through sort of everything in our sort of adult lives together, um, she doesn't pull any punches. She doesn't let me get away with anything. And she's very realist about everything. And That's she a says to me, best yeah, friend if, though, isn't it? I suppose. Yeah. If you... Had if I told you last year before you went in the villa that you were going to do that, but only do it once, you'd have been over the moon. Yeah. You wouldn't have said, "But I want to do it twice." And I think it's that rejection. And I think it is because everyone is so fixated. And you know, when you're at the villa, everyone you've got a year, you've got a year, you've got a year, and they announce Winter Love Island, and they're like, "No, you haven't got a year. Now you've got six months. You've got six months. You've got six months to build a career." Do you think that they I almost think enjoy actually, telling you that as well? It's yeah. almost like it. They You've got it. something I haven't, so I'm going to try and you know dampen oh, yeah, it a little bit. They, they love it. I remember when I um when I got my so obviously we came out the villa and Molly did pretty little thing, amazing. We had a lovely time up in Manchester. Then Amber did Miss Pat, which was amazing. Lovely time in London. And then we got in the style, and um, I hadn't had a day off in three months, and I'd worked solidly every day, right? But I hadn't yeah. got my clothing range yet. I got it perfect and I put it on Facebook and some one of my friends commented so glad you finally got something and I was like sorry and it really annoyed me because I was like I haven't had a day off in three months because I've worked non-stop and I've done things that I would never imagine I've done and 
like for me in the style was what I wanted like that was my one goal and I never thought I'd get it and the fact that I did I was like I would have waited 10 years for it for me I need I need to just like enjoy everything and like one day it probably will, will be over and I, and I feel like I've got I've got my big in the style pictures and um, we had from the launch and I've got one in my room and one of my friends had a comment like I can't oh, it's very self and I'm like no actually it's because if I ever feel like what have I done if I ever have a, a day where I think I want to be back on the plane what have I done I've ruined my life I just like look at stuff like that and I've got my loose woman cue card above my mirror um, I've got all like um, pictures like photo brief pictures yeah. above my mirror and I've got my loose woman cue cards from when I was a panellist and I look at my other style and I look at my loose woman thing and I just think do you know what like every job I've done has been amazing don't get me wrong right everything every opportunity I've had but for me those are the two that I think like I watched Lucy Moon for 15 years and then I was a I, I, like when I was a guest I was like I've sat in the audience here and now I'm a guest and then when I was a panelist and that tannoy went and it was like Lucy Moon today presented by Celine Nolan Amy Hart Janet Street Porter and Syrah Khan that for me I was that's when I was like what is going on and then like in the style I buy all my clothes from there, all of them. And the fact that I had pictures of me on their app selling clothes that were like under my name again. And that for me, I'm just like, you know what? Even if even if nothing ever happens again, I have to think about the fact like I'm so lucky. I think, do you know what? I'm I'm hustling and I'm a hustler. And everyone keeps saying you've got a year, you've got a year. And I know that I have put in place plans and I have met the right people and I have um and actually like I've inadvertently become because I I like I I like good chat as you can guess from this I like good chat I'm a nice person I'm easy to talk to so I have actually made a lot of really good friends within the industry they are the people that then when when they need because they like me like that when they need people to do stuff they're like oh Amy and also I've worked so hard in that I've always been on time I've always been polite to everyone I've always worked my ass off and got everything done that needs to be done and more um so people know that if they book me they're gonna get good work and I'm really proud of that right so I'm gonna have to pick your brains now because our girls and our audience are if I get one more voice note asking a similar question to ask you, because I said you were coming on and then they're like, right, you've got to ask her this. Okay. I think one of the reasons why a lot of people can relate to you is because everybody's had a heartbreak. It doesn't matter who you are, how bravo you want, how like how macho you want to make yourself feel or how much you want to lie. I've been there. I've had things that didn't work out the way I kind of hoped. I think everybody, if they're honest, would say they have been too. But yeah. Amy... God, nobody's been there on national TV. Like, yeah. What, like, what, what is that? I'm trying to ask this in the nicest way, but it's like, how do you deal what, with that? Is it like is getting mugged like? off in front of millions of people? Well, in, me in, the, in the nicest <laughs> way. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's all right because I didn't have to tell all my friends and family because they already knew. Job saved. Job saved. However, there were some bits that were cut out, but um, which I got played this morning when I did I did radio interview this morning, and they played me like a collection um, of best bits, which was awful. Um, and I there was a bit that I was like, that didn't happen like that, but it's done now, whatever. But um, yeah, I mean, oh, it's not ideal, is it? But it's really weird because you obviously, if I said to you, okay. I need you like to tell me everything that's happened in the last six days of your life, like everything yeah. you've said. You wouldn't remember it, yeah. especially if you were going through trauma. So, um, my flight home from Mallorca, one of my best friends was on the crew. Um, she wasn't supposed to be. She got called out for it. It was magical. It was just I just burst into tears when I saw her, um, and got like literally a face of makeup all over her shoulder and her white shirt, and um, went down the back to sit with her during the flight and she's like here she is little cat slater and i was like what she's like you're the new cat slater i was like sorry she's like i was coming back here to tell you i loved you and i was like what she's like you said it i was like did i she's like yeah showed me the clip didn't remember it 
Really? Yeah. And then I'm like, did you see all the songs we made up? She was like, no. Oh, brilliant. Great. It's kind of scary, that, isn't it? That it's com- it's completely what they choose it to be. Yeah. Like, are we, like we did have a real laugh. And I think, like, I remember stuff. And I have it all on a list on my phone so that I can then, when I feel like a bit like, oh God, I embarrass myself on national TV, I can quickly look at my list and think about all the really funny times that we had. Listen, I honestly don't think you ever embarrass yourself on national TV. I would genuinely say that as someone who watched it, I don't think you did. I think it was so nice that you came across as genuine. Um, and I don't think anybody can really dispute that now, especially listening to this. I, yeah, I, I don't think, I sometimes think, you know, Sometimes I do think back and I do think maybe I should go into it with a different mindset because some people were there for the experience, people were there to win the money, some people were there for a career, some people were there to boost their career. Um, and I think I genuinely went in there to meet someone and I think, oh, maybe maybe I wouldn't have been so upset if I'd gone in there just for fun. But then I think, actually, do you know what? It was five weeks of my life. Everything led to me leaving in the way that it did and that's set me up now for sort of going forward, showing that I'm not your average Islander. So, But you know what as well? I think the fact that the next thing you went on was Celebs Go Dating. You, you, I know you got offered a lot of other stuff and you said no. Mm-hmm. And you just went on that. I think that says a lot in the sense of the fact that, well, you're still the same person who went on. You were still yeah. looking for the same thing. Yeah, and I mean, I, um, I went on Celebs Go Dating to sort of like show people like the real me. And I think I did, but then you forget like, it is it is a world of TV and they'd be like, oh, can you just like, you know, talk about the Curtis thing quickly? And I'd be like, well, no, no, I don't really want to. It's a bit, you've got to remember people, some people don't watch Love Island, some people don't understand. When we're saying about what happened, about what happened, some people don't know what that is. Mm. And I'm like, yeah, no, okay, no, you're right. So, yeah, I mean, it will probably haunt me forever, me crying on telly, but, you know, it's. I, I think I get so many messages from girls saying, you know, I, I thought I was weird because I'd never had a boyfriend when I was your age and like now I realise I'm not and so much just my little theatre kids that are like 14 and like everyone at school thinks I'm weird because I love musicals but now you love musicals as well so I don't feel as weird like and I just think do you know what all right I might sometimes think that I embarrass myself but it was worth it to like just help people. Genuinely no I really do hope it doesn't haunt you forever because I think you've got no reason for it to you know what I mean that a, it was five weeks of your well, life. Well it's stuff yeah it's stuff like so Adele, um, the not Adele, Adele, Adele. I can't think of her last name. Um, was on I'm a Celebrity, the Radio One DJ. Yeah, I know who um, you mean. Yeah, I completely forgot that she was on Big Brother. Ah, she was Big Brother Three with Jade and Alison and stuff. So I'm like, yes, yeah, so I'm like, if I can, you know, maybe one day people forget. But then I'm, I'm, I'm really proud to have been on Love Island. I'm proud that. Because, you know, a lot of people said to me before, when I applied, you won't get on it, you're not Love Island. You know, you're not pretty enough to be on Love Island, you're not skinny enough to be on Love Island, you've got too many brain cells to be on Love Island, you're too weird to be on Love Island. Amy, and if I you went on I, and you were yourself, whether it was good, bad, ugly, or even now, years on, where you're yeah. not the same person you were a few years ago, and you look back at it and go, oh, yeah. God, uh, Amy, if there was a TV programme of me a year ago, never mind five yeah. years ago, I would be mortified. Yeah. Because you but do stuff think, that you think, I'm, why have I yeah. done that? I'm really proud that I was the first like person like me on Love Island. I don't think there's been anyone like me before. And um, I, yeah, I'm really proud that they sort of took a punt on me and, and gave me a go. Something you've talked about a lot is obviously dealing with anxiety and did that just come, do you think that anxiety you had maybe came out as a result of being on the show or was that always there? No, so having worked with my therapist, so people say, Amy's still in therapy after Love Island. She probably shouldn't have gone on if she's still in therapy now. My therapy um, is dealing with stuff from years before that, yeah. you know, I've I've never really been able to, because I'd, like, you know, you think, oh, I don't need a therapist. But stuff like, so my core beliefs, bit of CBT here if you will my core beliefs are that I'm not good enough I'm a failure and that I'm unlikable right so just anyone who doesn't know CBT is like cognitive behavioral therapy yeah yeah it's not computer-based training like it was at the show (laughs) um but 
yeah so my and it's ba- it's kind of based around like right I have a way of thinking that is based on stories yeah. that I tell myself yeah yeah just so, so everyone gets it, right? like I didn't realize that everything I every way I react in my life goes back to those three core beliefs and I my therapist said to me um unlikable not good enough failure right um and so as you can imagine when the shit will hit the fan in the villa those three things in my head to the story you tell yourself yeah um and for example, every I didn't realise, but every time you have stress, it always gets out. So, like, my therapist said to me, so, have you been stressed at all this week? And I'm like, yeah, but there was a reason for it, so it's fine. She's like, right, go on then. I'm like, oh, my makeup card is cancelled um, on the morning of an awards ceremony that I was going to. Yeah. She said, right. I said, so I was obviously really stressed, but that's because of that. She went, right, okay. So, what happens if the uh, if makeup artist can't do makeup? I'm like, well, I have to do it myself. Right, and if you have to do it yourself, what happens then? I'm like won't be as good and then obviously like I just won't look as nice and she's like and then because you're not I'm like because I'm not good enough like and she said that's why you're stressed because it all goes back to that because you think people will think I'm not good enough to be there if I don't look right very it's very interesting I'm very fascinated by the whole thing Amy yeah tell me about chicken little chicken little um so chicken little um so that is uh, we did a lot about, I did, had therapy this morning actually, we did a lot about inner voice today. So that's what Paul Brunson um, called my inner voice, Chicken Little. And tell me about your inner voice. That I feel like everyone has, so, and this is, what you're saying here has got a lot of value to people, because maybe they've got this, they don't realise, yeah. and it causes people a lot of problems. So it comes from like, um, like critical teachers, like people being critical in your life, people telling you you're not good enough, and it's the, it's the story that you're, sort of brought up with and it's the um you know throughout your life if you're bullied um by people both in child and adulthood like toxic friendships and stuff and it's that your it's that horrible negative um oh, narrative but then because you've heard it so many times you develop your own inner voice that just says what they've always been saying and you've got to like so we're like working on some stuff to change my mindset I'm really excited about it actually and I'm really excited to see how it sort of changes my life because she says like it will change the way you deal with absolutely everything and it's very tiring being me like, <laughs> like always being always having the inner voice going so I'm like yeah I'm looking forward to that actually you know some there'll be a lot I, I genuinely genuinely think there's going to be a lot of people listening to this and they're going oh I've got a voice like that I struggle with that like I have anxiety sometimes like I've heard you say that you feel like permanently overwhelmed if yeah like, if someone does relate to that what would you say to them in terms of what you've experienced and maybe what might you think you hope might be able to help them I um, just need to rationalize things like I'm quite lucky in that I'm a very irrational but also a very rational person so um when I go oh my god da, 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 then I can sit back and go actually this happened this happened that's why that happened but like I know a lot of your listeners are cabin crew and when I my first bout of really bad anxiety was when I first started flying and like I mean I still lived at home so for all your lot that have all moved to Abu Dhabi and Dubai like completely take my hat off to you because moving to a new country and starting flying um must be really difficult for some people and I was just so I thought I was going to get sacked all the time and that and now I realize that's because that that's the not good enough thing and that's the failure thing and for example, when I used to go down for drinks with the crew, I would be the first one down and the last one to leave. I wouldn't go, go up to go to the toilet. If I ran out of drinks, I wouldn't get any more because I wouldn't leave the group situation because I was so petrified that people would slag me off when I got up to leave. Like I couldn't even with all my wow. friends and I, I wouldn't because I would be so petrified. And then I realised that people are going to do it. Like you could all be together the whole time. You go back to your room. Someone would, if someone's going to do it, they'll text it to someone or they'll phone their room and tell them that way. So in the end, I was like, do you know what? Actually, I can't control what other people say about me. So I'm going to see this thing. It's very tiring being Ames. Like there's a lot going on in the head. <laughs> Amy, there's so much I want to try and say to try and help. Firstly, I think it's important that you know that most people have the same thoughts as you. Yeah. 
and I don't think it's a special circumstance. Like, I get it completely. Like, listen, like I sit in that that nightclub world where people look at it and they think, oh yeah, he's dead confident. He's the kid. I can. I'm just very good at that. Like you are, I can play that role for a yeah. set period of time because I can do it and I've done it a million times. Looking back now, if you could give some advice and you could make one of those past phone calls, so you could you could bring Amy, who's just left the villa, you could ring her up now. You haven't got to explain, yeah, it's me from a year's time, it's weird. Yeah. You could just literally give her some advice. <laughs> what would you say to her? Um Make sure you're eating properly, because I didn't. I got very, very thin. I was so busy. But just um, write it all down, I would say, because I really regret that, that I don't have it all written down, what I did. Um, I just, like, live in the moment. Like, you'll never be as current and as, like, in the, in the public eye as you are right now. And I sort of, where... It was like we'd finish a job and straight into a car, straight to the next one, straight into a car, straight to the next one. Back to Worthing, tip my suitcase out, pack it all back up again, back to London again. And I just, I wish I'd sort of, I'd be like, kept like a video diary or something just to, just to like remember it. Do you know what though? The best part of it, I think you can at least remember is the fact that from what I've picked up is that you've just always been yourself and whether that's been for good or bad. Yeah, You've just I mean, done what I you thought was the right thing at the time. Yeah, I still live at home. I'm still at home in Worthing. And that's another thing, like, because I'm still, my life is still, in that sense, very similar to what it was before. And I'll be, like, in my room, like, pottering around or something, and I'll find something that has, like, Love Island, sort of, um, it's like a Love Island thing. And I go, oh, my God. Yeah, no. Yeah, no, I was on Love Island. And yeah, no, okay. oh, that did all happen, yeah. Because my life's still so normal. And like, you know, when people come out of the villa sometimes, and if they're not from London or surrounding areas, they're on their own. And, you know, I've seen people go to events on their own and stuff. I literally, for the first four weeks, and my agent was a family friend before. Right. Um, and for the first four weeks, I had... My agent, my mum, my best friend, or one of my other best friends, with me the whole time. Yeah. And they would, they, they like work it out between them. So, like, if my agent hadn't seen her husband for like 10 days, um, one of my best friends would phone her and say, Right, you have tomorrow off, I'll go to London with Amy. And they all sort of did it that way. And so I always had someone from my past life with me. And also, they are, like, they won't ever let, like, People say, you're so normal, you're so grounded. I'm like, A, I would never have become non-grounded anyway. Um, and two, like, I've got a good network of people around me that would never let me get like that. I Can think I once you? I snapped, I snapped at my best friend once and she was like, I don't care what you've been on, you don't speak to me like that. I'm like, I'm just stressed, right? Can I ask you? Yeah. What, what's the goal now? I mean, I've got different ones in different um, different sectors, shall we say? So, like, oh. so like, let's say, so like, personal life wise, I would still like to meet someone. Yeah. Um, but all the boys I meet just aren't very nice. Um, but I am going to freeze my eggs still because I like right. I'm going to be a mum, whatever, whether or not I get a husband. But that child thing still, I'm going to have my teeth done. TV wise, um. My long-term goal, I want my own, like, travel show. I want to be the new Jane McDonald without the singing. A um, bit of cruising with Jane McDonald. But um, I just, like, to you guys as well, like, learning a new skill or doing something that I would never otherwise get to do, would I'd love that. So I don't care what the reality show is, I'll do it. If I get if I get something out of it, like a new skill, new friends, new experience, I'm happy to do it. Um, and then, like, I want to write a book about my time at BA and just all the crazy stories um, about life as an air hostess. And yeah, I think, and I've got my um, radio show on Magic at the Musicals as well. So not much to ask for, really. Well, Amy, honestly, you've been so honest and so just like down to earth. I genuinely appreciate it so much. Like, as I said to you before, we came on, there's so many of our like, audience who are cabin crew and who have related to so many different things about you yeah maybe they haven't had the national tv thing but mm. 
they can relate to you and you giving them that advice. I just I hope that it helps some people. And I Do also you know what, though? hope it helped you a little bit as well. Yeah. We love talking about it. But um if any of your listeners ever do apply for a reality TV show, I can tell you now that being cabin crew is the best training you will ever have because you're used to sleep deprivation. You're used to being knackered, feeling crap, but having to put on a brave face. And you're used to being asked awkward questions that you've got to try and get out of. So being cabin crew is the best training for reality TV. So we started this with a lot of our staff were going through career uncertainty because they work as cabin yeah. crew during lockdown. And we're going to end it with, there you go, you've got your next career in the bag from Amy Hart. Reality TV yeah. is for you. <laughs> exactly. You go, girls and boys. <laughs> there you have it. I don't think you could actually ask for a more honest look at what life in the limelight really can be like. So a massive thank you to Amy for both coming on and, well, just for being so honest with her story so far. She's going to be off to Marbella this summer for her birthday, so we're going to get some candy pants bikinis sent out to her as a little thank you from us. And if you're looking to ditch your lockdown look and finally get glam again, don't forget to check out Candy Pants Store on Instagram or just search Candy Pants on ASOS. We're back next week with a serious nightlife legend on the podcast. It's the icon of Ibiza himself, Mr. Judge Jules. But until then, as always, thank you very much for listening and we'll see you all very soon.